Ooh, damn. Kind of got to drop a deuce. Yo, Sean, we rolling? Yes, Chuck, we're rolling. Oh, well, this is Chuck Johnson, and I'm here to show you! <laughs> so, this episode goes out to Russell Bakewell, who originally asked me for shadow boxing combos for self-defense. So what I could do is I could just take my shirt off and then oil myself up and then do a bunch of fancy looking combinations into the camera and look really, really cool. <laughs> and give you something that most likely would be relatively useless for self-defense, which some YouTubers do. I will say no names. But what I would rather do instead is for this episode to actually take a step back from the teacher seat and then step into the student seat to give you guys something that may not be as fancy, may not be as cool looking, but is much more likely to actually help you in a sticky street situation. So in order to do that, I first went and consulted with my good buddy Keith Fargo, a longtime writer at Black Belt Magazine and one of the people that I know that knows the most about boxing. And then beyond that, what I thought would be really cool would be to bring in my good buddy Stuart Fulton. Stu is a former bouncer from Scotland, a pro MMA fighter of eight years in Japan, and one of the most physically intimidating Scotsmen I've ever met in my life. Come on, man, you've only met two of us. It's a technicality, Stu. You see what I'm saying? So Stu's gonna be walking us through three techniques that you can use in a violent confrontation. And we also got Jean-Claude Van Damme. Van Damme, you happy to be here? No. Well, all right, man, if you're gonna give us all that attitude, then you can just stay off camera for the rest of the show. That guy, unbelievable. All right, technique number one, okay? Stu, it's all you, bro. Okay, here's the thing. Uh, in any violent street confrontation, it's all about preparation and timing. Things go from zero to 100 very quickly. So you need to be prepared, you need to be ready. First thing, make sure you're not standing flush to the guy. Square off. Why do we do this? This gives you room to move. You can move to the side, both sides. You can move back very quickly uh, <coughs> and you can defend yourself. This also sets up the fence, um, which is your lead hand near the guy's chest and your body language showing the guy that you don't really want to fight. Another good thing about that as well is if, you're, if we're squared off like this, as you can see, this lends itself really well to me just being like, bam, and just giving him an elbow right across the face because we're so close. Right when Stu steps back to a 45, it can see it gives just, in addition to having that lead hand to be able to defend, it also actually puts his head farther away. So that means I would actually have to reach farther to get in and get it. Okay, so this stance gives you room to move, and even if he's insisting on getting up in your face, you're still able to keep your distance and watch for anything coming. Also, look into one eye, stare into one eye. Don't let your eyes dart around. Just stare into one eye, keep calm, show your body language that you don't want any confrontation, any violence, you don't want to fight. One eye. So Stu, why, why, why one eye? Uh, it stops uh, giving off little signals that you might be scared or not sure what to do. Uh, and it's gonna make him more aggressive. So you're here, you're ready for anything that might be coming. You wanna try and talk the situation down, of course, but if the guy's intent on smacking you in the face, you wanna be ready for it. So, I'm here, he's going for it, I can tell he's gonna swing, and here comes the big punch. Mother Very simple. I'm at 45 degrees, I can move back really quickly. My hands are up, so I can already defend myself. And in this situation, I've anticipated it. I know it's coming, I can see it coming, because he might be drunk. He's probably telegraphing it, and uh, my hands are up ready to catch it. Once more. I'm out of the way of harm. That's rule number one, get out the way. Not like anybody in their right mind will mess with a dude that's this big. Okay, so the other thing here is, after you've checked it, you've created some distance, it gives you that split second to assess the situation. Is he still coming at you? Is he just posturing? Is there other people around that might be able to help you? Or do you have a safe escape? Can you run? Word. Technique number two. So the aggressor's ready to fight. You can tell it, you can smell it in the air. And because you're ready, you can see something coming. The big haymaker is probably the one he's going to throw because he wants to smash you with one punch. So rather than taking it straight in the face, you might not, <laughs> you might not like that and you might not have time to check it and go back.
So, you just want to get under it and out of the way. So if you guys will notice, as Stu was doing this, he wasn't just moving forward to get under that haymaker and he wasn't just moving laterally. He was moving off at a 45 degree angle. In other words, you want to move off in a V-shape. This is something that I actually mentioned in, I think, episode 15 of the show, Defenses Against Haymakers. And here it is again with Stu bringing it up in this one. Which means that it's not just me telling y'all, this is a good tactic. Okay, here's the third one. Point number three! Now, with this one, you don't have time to move out the way, you don't have time to check anything and move back or move off in the V. Something's coming and it's too quick. So, to be ready, your guard's got to be up. Now, when people practice guard, they usually do this and they think about this. This is not bad because you're protecting your chin, but if the guy's bigger and obviously stronger, then you want more than this. So, you want to bring your hands up with your hand on the back of your neck and your arm and your elbow covering your ear and the whole of your jaw. Because it's no use if you're covering here and the guy catches you here. Boom! You're going for a sleep. This one, you're protecting everything. So, hand behind the neck, elbow pointing towards him. This has got to happen very quick. So, you don't know what's coming, probably a haymaker, a couple of punches, maybe a flurry. Either way, you're protected. And see, the other thing you'll notice too, even if I go in for a straight punch, if his elbow comes up like that, bam, right into his elbow, not very nice. Broken. Ouch! So, this is not enough. You can't just stand there and pretend to watch and block all of these punches. You want to be slightly offensive with this one. You're driving in. Oh, bro. Anyway, your hands are going up and you're driving into his face with your elbows. All of your body weight. And that's a lot of body weight, I'm telling you. Right. So as you guys can see, I can't get in there. Even when you throw that punch, like when you see that elbow come up, you don't actually want to extend it because you can tell it's going to hurt. This also gives you a little bit more control in the situation. The other two, you're just getting out of the way and reassessing. This one, you, you've got a bit more control. You're now in his face. So, <clears throat> you, of course, you don't want to leave it at that. You want to block and get in there and flip as much damage as you can to his jaw, his neck, his face. And you can also finish off by pushing him out of the way to create your space again. You've blocked it and you have some control. So we've got these three techniques to give you some control of the situation. What do you do after that? You don't want to stand and trade with a guy. He might be bigger, he might be stronger, he might have some training in him already. So you want to swallow your pride and bolt. That gives you time to do that. Actually, if I could add in one other point, the other danger of actually staying there isn't just the fact that if he already knows how to punch and you don't know how to punch very well, you're liable to get knocked out in this exchange. There's also the fact that he could grab you, you know what I mean? And if you don't know anything about being on the ground and defending yourself on the ground, the last thing you want is to have somebody that's bigger and stronger than you to actually get a hold of you. He may even have friends nearby. Exactly. Forget your ego, get out of there without head trauma and without a broken face. Broken faces are bad. Very bad. Bad, bad, bad. So, uh, by the way, Van Dam, what do you think of all these techniques? You think this stuff will work on the street? Not on your life. I think they missed a know-it-all, then what would you do? <laughs> well, yeah, dude, but if you throw a high-section round kick at somebody and then you miss, then you're going to be in a lot of trouble because it's going to take time to recover and they're likely to tap at you and all this other stuff. So, what have you missed with a round kick? Alright, well there you have it. So if you're Van Damme, you would just shoot them. Or if you're Chuck Norris, you would just kind of look at them and they would explode. However, if you're not one of those two, then you should use these techniques! 
Okay, so the other thing is, after these things, do you throw back? Well, most of the times, no. But there might be a time where you've successfully gotten out of the way, the guy's maybe a bit drunk, a little bit slow, you can throw something. But don't stand and trade. As Chuck said before, it's going to get messy. So, if you're going to throw something, throw your biggest, hardest punch, and then get out of there. So, at the end of the day, you're still getting out of there. So now guys, we're just gonna recap those techniques for you so you can see them one more time, okay? So what you're gonna do, you're gonna get out of the way and you're gonna hit them quickly. Two. Three. So you're finishing off with something, but you're not staying there. Don't stay in the pocket. Get out of there. Bonus technique! There might be a time where you get tied up. So, in that case, be pugilistic. <laughs> Grab the back of the head, drive upwards. Don't head butt like that. Drive upwards into his jaw. Once more. And get out of there. So guys, as you guys saw, Stu's got a lot of really, really great techniques for self-defense. And then one thing that I want to mention is with all these techniques, even though he's throwing a counter punch after, that punch isn't actually to knock them out. It's simply to stun them so that you can get out. Which means that if you can get out without even having to hit them, then that's even better. Okay? The idea is always just to get out, get out, get out. And again, not standing there and then trading punches because that's when you're liable to get knocked out. Or what can be even worse, get knocked down so that you're on the ground and they're still standing. That's it. That's everything that I wanted to discuss and cover for episode 19 of the show. As always, thank you so much for watching and hope to see you next time. Oh, bro. What's up? You all right? Yeah, I just really got to go to the bathroom, dude. Okay. But yo, before I go, why don't you pull my finger? This is an American thing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, why don't you just give it a pull? Run for your life! Oh!